Okay, here we go. This is section 5.6, and this is our half angle formulas. Okay, half angle formulas. So again, I'm gonna write that bigger on the top of the page. Um, so in section 5.5, we went over the um, double angle formulas, which really didn't give us anything new, right? Because if I say cosine of 2a, um, 2a, that's just addition, right? So it's just being able to write that addition in a different way to make a more concise formula, which didn't really change anything. It just gave us kind of more variety. The reason why we care about those double angle formulas is because we can use them to come up with half angle formulas, which is what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so I'm going to go through the process of coming up with the three half angle formulas, sine, cosine, and tangent. And you can see it's an angle divided by two, which is why we call it half angle formula. And then we're going to go into how we're going to use these formulas. Okay, so first of all, we want to come up with a formula for sine of x over 2. So we're going to start with this double angle formula that we came up with in section 5.5, which is that cosine of 2a is equal to 1 minus sine squared, or sorry, minus 2 sine squared a, right? This is one of the formulas we came up with. Um, so this has to be true for any angle a, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a specific angle a. I'm going to let a equal x over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and say cosine of 2 times x over 2, right? Because I'm just saying let my a equal x over 2 because that's be true for all a. Then I can rewrite this as 1 minus 2 sine squared of my a, which is x over 2. So this is where I'm going to get the formula from, right? But I need to do some simplifying because I need to be able to, to solve this because I just want to end up with something um, like sine of x over 2 equals whatever it equals, right? So I need to be able to solve this one. So I'm just going to say now solve for sine x over 2, okay? All right, so in order to sign, uh, sign, to solve for that, I need to do a little bit of simplifying. Notice on this side, I can go ahead and simplify this, right? Because 2 times x over 2, here my 2s would cancel. And this just gives me cosine x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of x over 2. And if I'm trying to get sine of x over 2 by itself, um, I first need to get this term isolated, right? So I'm going to go ahead and move this 1 to the other side by subtracting. So that's going to give me cosine x minus 1 equals negative 2 sine squared x over 2, right? And then again, still trying to get sine x over 2 by itself, I now need to get rid of this negative 2. So if I divide... Um, well, I can divide by the negative 2 or I could do it in steps. I could divide off the negative first and then divide off the 2, whichever one makes it easier for you. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the negative first because if I divide the negative off this side, I would have to divide a negative on this side, right? And we really want to come out with a nice positive sign of x over 2 on this side, not a negative one, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, get rid of this negative first, okay? Excuse me. If I get rid of that negative, let's just put it like this. Want positive, um, so no issues when we square root, right? Because eventually we're going to have to square root this to get sine by itself instead of a sine squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that negative. Now the way to get rid of a negative is either multiply or divide by a negative. So if I multiply or divide by a negative on this side, that's going to make it a positive 2 sine squared x over 2. And if I multiply or divide by a negative on this side, it's just going to uh, change the signs of the terms, right? So my cosine x is going to be a negative cosine x, and my 1 is going to be a positive 1, right? 
Okay, so now to get sine squared x by itself, I need to divide off the two. So I'm gonna come over here because I'm running out of room. So if I divide off the two, I'm now gonna have negative cosine x plus one over two is equal to sine squared x over two. And then the last thing I have to do to get um, sine x over two instead of sine squared x over two is I have to take the square root of both sides. And remember when we take the square root of both sides, we have to remember plus or minus. So I get plus or minus the square root of negative cosine x plus one over two is equal to sine x over two. So now we have a formula for finding the sine of a half angle, right? So if we need to find the sine of like 15.2, <laughs> right? Or something like that, where it's some weird half angle, um, we can, we can, or maybe not 15.2, maybe like 15.5 or something like that. Um, we now have a formula for that. Now I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. We usually don't like to write the negative term first. So I'm going to write the one first. I'm going to write this as one minus cosine x on top. And I'm going to write it up here so that I can circle that as this new formula we came up with. So sine of an angle divided by two is equal to plus or minus. Now the plus or minus, we're going to know which one to use based on which quadrant that angle is located in. Okay, we'll do an example of that here in just a little bit. Uh, plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine x over two. And notice the, the square root is around the entire fraction, not just the top, okay? So here's my first formula. So sine of a half angle looks like plus or minus uh, the square root of one minus cosine x over two, okay? Now I wanna do the same thing for cosine of a half angle. Okay, I want to figure out a formula for it. So I'm going to do the same thing like I did here. I'm going to take my cosine um, of a half angle and I'm going to use this formula. And, in, and because I can pick whatever a value I want, again, I'm going to pick x over 2 as my angle value. Okay, So that's going to mean that cosine of 2 times x over 2 equals 2, just plugging it into this formula. 2 cosine squared of my a, which my a, remember, I set to be x over 2, minus 1. And now just like we did with the, um, with the 1 up here, right, I want to go ahead and solve this for cosine um, of x over 2. So I'm going to say now solve for cosine x over 2 so we can find a formula for it okay so first thing I want to do is some simplifying over here my 2 on top and bottom cancel so that leaves me with just cosine x is equal to 2 times cosine squared x over 2 minus 1 and if I'm trying to get this cosine of x over 2 by itself I need to move that one to the other side so I'm gonna go ahead and move that one by adding so that gives me cosine x plus 1 is equal to 2 cosine squared of x over 2. And here, here we don't have to worry about getting rid of a negative, right? On this one, we had a negative that we needed to get rid of before we could divide the 2 off. This one, we don't have a negative term, so we can go straight into dividing both sides by 2. So that's going to give me cosine x plus 1 over 2 is equal to cosine squared x over 2. And then I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And don't forget your plus or minus. So that's going to give me plus or minus the square root of cosine x plus 1 all over 2 is equal to cosine of x over 2. And again, we're going to know whether or not to use the plus or the minus based on which quadrant our angle is located in. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this one so it looks similar to the other one. Notice the other one I wrote the 1 first and then the cosine term. I'm going to do the same thing here. So really the only difference between the sine of a half angle formula and the cosine of a half angle formula 
is that I'm adding the two terms on top rather than um, subtracting them. So my cosine formula here is going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine x all over 2. Right? And now we have a nice formula for a cosine half angle value. Okay? All right. So now that we have the sine formula and now that we have the cosine formula, we can now find the tangent formula. And we can actually find the tangent formula in a different way than we did the other two because we know that tangent of x over 2, we know we can write tangent as a ratio of sine and cosine. So we could write this as sine of x over 2 divided by cosine of x over 2, right? And now we have formulas for both of those. That's what I circled up here in orange. So now I can just put in those formulas. The formula for sine of a half angle is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine x over 2. And the formula for cosine of a half angle we just found to be plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine x over 2. Now, a couple of things I want to point out. We do need to simplify this a little bit, right? One thing is that if I have plus or minus all the numbers in the top and I have plus or minus all the numbers on the bottom, that's the same thing as just writing 1 plus or minus in front of the fraction. Right? So instead of redundantly writing it in the top and the bottom, I'm just going to write it one time out front. The other thing that I can do is um, the same thing with the square roots. Instead of saying the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom separately, I can go ahead and take the square root um, of the entire fraction. Okay, 1 minus cosine x over 2 divided by 1 plus cosine x over 2. And the reason I want to do that is so that I can write this fraction line as a division. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that down below. So I have plus or minus the square root. And when we do a division, we keep the first fraction the same, and then we multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction we're dividing, right? So I have 1 minus cosine x over 2 from the top, and then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the um, fraction from the denominator. So that's going to give me 2 over 1 plus cosine x. And you can see here my 2's will cancel, and I'm left with plus or minus um, the square root of 1 minus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. Okay. And this is our formula for tangent. And I don't really have enough room to write it right here, so I'm going to go ahead and come and write it down below. So tangent of x over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root 1 minus cosine x, 1 plus cosine x. Okay, so that is our tangent formula for a half angle. Okay? So now we have our three formulas that we can use to calculate our half angle. So on the top of the next page, you can see I went ahead and just put them all here so we wouldn't have to like transfer them over. So here's our half angle for sine. Here's our half angle for cosine. Here's the tangent of a half angle that we just solved for. And now these two right here, these are basically, um, I'm not going to worry about showing you how to derive these two. Um, Basically, they're just algebraic manipulations of this one, okay? So if I were to take this, this tangent angle, I could actually do some multiplying, right? <laughs> you notice these kind of look like difference of squares uh, quantities. So if I multiply by a certain type of form of 1 here, um, I can come up with these other two formulas uh, for tangent of a half angle that doesn't involve the square root, which is really, really nice. Okay. So again, I'm not going to worry about deriving these two, but whenever um, you're looking for a tangent of a half angle formula, you can use any of these three, whichever one looks like it's the most simple for the situation you're dealing with. Okay. All right. So let's look at how we're going to use this or how we're going to use these formulas. 
So it says use the half angle identities to find the exact value. Anytime you see the exact value, that means you're not going to be using decimals. You're probably going to end up with square roots in your answer somewhere, but you want it as simplified as possible. Okay. So we want to find the exact value of sine of 22.5 degrees. Now, 22.5 degrees is not something pretty, right? That's not, that's a half angle. Literally it's 22 and a half. Um, and that's not something that we want to try to make a reference triangle for. So what I want to do is I want to create a half angle using this. I'd love to end up with sine of some angle over two. So what I'm trying to figure out is what angle do I have to divide by two to end up with 22.5 or in other words, if X over two equals 22.5, then what does X have to be, right? So if I take an angle and divide it by two to get 22.5, I could take 22.5 and multiply it by two to figure out what that angle is, right? Or cross multiply. So that would mean that X is equal to, if I take 22.5 and multiply it by two, that gives me 45 degrees. So basically what we're saying is 22.5 is half of 45 degrees, right? And so I can use this. So what I want to do is I want to calculate sine of 22.5 degrees, but instead of writing it as 22.5 degrees, I'm going to write it as 45 degrees divided by two. Does that make sense? You agree that 45 divided by two is still 22.5. But the reason I'm writing it like this is because now I can use this sign of a half angle formula that says whatever this value is on top, whatever that angle is on top, that's the value we're going to calculate the cosine value of. And I know how to find cosine of 45, right? So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. So sine of our angle over two, or sine of 45 over two is going to equal plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine of our X value. Now remember our X value was the angle on top that we're dividing by two. So we're going to be doing cosine of 45 degrees all over two. Okay. Now the other thing we need to be sure of is we should know if this is a positive or a negative because we know what quadrant 22.5 degrees is in, right? If I think about this, if I wanted to graph, I'm sorry, this is 0, 90, 180, and 270, and I asked you to graph 22.5 degrees, that's going to be down here somewhere, right? So we know that this is in quadrant 1. So if this angle is in quadrant one and we're calculating the sine value of it, right? Sine has to do with the y's and all of the y values in this quadrant are positive. So we know we're going to take the positive value. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just write this out. So we know it's going to be positive. So I'm just, I'm not going to write the plus, but we know it's positive. So square root of one minus now cosine of 45. If you look at your unit circle or your chart um, that I gave you back in section 5.3, you'll see that cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of two over two. And then that's all over two. Now, I know that this seems kind of horrid, but what I am testing you on when you when you take the test for this section is I am looking for, did you know which half angle formula to use? Were you able to find the correct angle X, which in this case is 45? And then were you able to find the evaluated trig function value, which is this step? So on an exam, I'm gonna go ahead and just say stop here for the exam. Okay. So once you've, you've got your formula and you've plugged in the value of the trig function, that's as far as you need to go for a test. Okay. That's all I'm grading. I don't care if you simplify it any further past that point. However, on your homework, because it's in my math lab, it's going to want you to simplify this on down. So I am going to go ahead and simplify it, but just know for an exam, 
once you you evaluate that trig function and you have the trig function value in there you can stop at that point okay all right we are going to go ahead and simplify so i need a common denominator on the top this is like one over one so one i could write as any number over itself since i want to combine it with this i'm going to write it as two over two minus the square root of two over two all over two okay so now I can write this top piece as one fraction, okay? So I have the square root of two minus the square root of two all over two, all over two, <laughs> okay? So all I did is write this top piece as one fraction, and the bottom, that two, I could write that as two over one, right? So really what I have is a fraction divided by a fraction. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it out like that. So I have the square root of the top fraction, which is two minus the square root of two over two, and I'm dividing it by this bottom fraction, which would then flip it, right? So let's just go ahead and flip it. I'm gonna turn it into a multiplication. When I flip it, I get one half. So that gives me the square root of two minus the square root of two all over four. Right. Now on top, I can't simplify this. We don't have rules for doing a square root within a square root, but the bottom I can simplify because I know what the square root of four is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change this into the square root of the top, which is two minus the square root of two over the square root of four. So instead of writing the square root over the entire fraction, I broke it up into the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. That way I can simplify that bottom piece. So I have two minus the square root of two under the radical on top, and then on bottom, it's just over two, okay? And that's as simplified as this one gets. So again, when you're working out your My Math Lab, <clears throat> you're probably gonna have to simplify it all the way down to this point. On an exam, I'm fine with you stopping way up here because I'm not looking for all this algebraic manipulation. I'm just looking for, did you get the correct X angle did you use the correct formula did you correctly choose if it's positive or negative and then did you plug in the correct trig function value okay all right let's look at another one tangent of 75 75 is not a nice pretty angle we have a reference triangle for so i want to see okay well if i doubled that angle is that a nice pretty angle right in other words could I write this as tangent of some x divided by 2, right? So if I take uh, 75, I want x divided by 2 to equal 75 to figure out what x is, then all I would have to do is multiply by 2 on both sides, right? So that means x would have to be 150 degrees. And 150 degrees is a nice pretty reference triangle value that we can use, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and write this as the tangent of 150 degrees divided by two. That way, this top value, 150, that's my x, right? So that's the x value that I can plug into whichever formula I choose to use. Now, because it's tangent and I have several different formulas to choose from, I'm gonna pick the first easy looking one, <laughs> okay? This one looks horrible because I have to worry about plus or minus, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to use this first one that doesn't look so horrible, which says that I need to calculate the sine value of my x. And remember again, my x is this number on top, right? It's the angle that I'm halving. So here I'm going to do sine of 150 degrees divided by, on bottom, we're doing cosine of that same angle plus one. So cosine of 150 degrees plus one. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in what those values are. So again, looking at your um, uh, unit circle or the chart that I gave you in section 5.3, we can look up these values um, or you can use, well, you can't use your calculator because we need exact values. So sine of 150, if we look it up, actually equals one half divided by cosine of 150, which is negative square root of three over two, 
and then we're adding one to it. So I've chosen my correct X value, which was 150. I've plugged it into the correct formula, and now I have put in the trig function values. So right here is where I would allow you to stop on an exam. Stop here on exam, okay? I don't want you to go any further than that. You can just stop, okay? But for your homework, for my math lab, we do need to go ahead and simplify this out, okay? So the first thing I need to do is get a common denominator on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and say on top we have a half. On bottom, I need to combine this one, which has a denominator of 2, with 1. And remember, 1 we can write as any number over itself. Since I want to combine it with this, I'm going to write it as 2 over 2. So I have negative square root of 3 over 2 plus 2 over 2. So now I can combine those and write them as one fraction, which is negative root 3 plus 2 all over 2. And now that I have one fraction divided by one fraction, I can flip and multiply, right? So this gives me 1 half times 2 over negative square root of 3 plus 2, okay? All right, so my 2s are going to cancel, and I'm left with 1 over negative square root of 3 plus 2. Now, unfortunately, my math lab doesn't like that either because it has a radical in the denominator. So this is a situation where we need to rationalize the denominator. And if you all remember, when we rationalize the denominator, anytime there's more than one term, we use the exact same denominator that we have, but we change the middle value. So we're going to multiply on top and bottom by negative square root of 3 minus 2 minus 2. Okay, that way all the radicals will cancel out on the bottom. And I'll go ahead and walk you through that just so that you can see. But I'm going to make a note here. This was just to rationalize the denominator. If you end up with a denominator that doesn't have radicals, then you're done. But since we ended up with a denominator with radicals, we have to keep doing a little bit more. Okay, so on top, when I do 1 times this, I'm just going to end up with negative square root of 3 minus 2. On bottom, I'm going to have to FOIL this out, right? This one times this one. So when I do negative square root of 3 times negative square root of 3, that's going to give me positive square root of 9, which is just 3, right? And then I'm not going to write all this out, but I just want you to think about it. If I do a negative root 3 times a negative 2, that gives me a positive 2 root 3. And then when I distribute this next one, that's going to give me a negative 2 root 3. So when I do my outers and my inners, <laughs> inners, my outer and my inner, <laughs> right, then those are going to cancel because I'm getting opposite terms. And then when I do my 2 times my negative 2, I get negative 4. So this does simplify down to something that does not have a radical in the denominator, right? And then when we divide by a negative 1, that just changes the signs. So this just becomes square root of 3 plus 2 as my final answer. Okay. So I apologize for the extra work involved just getting it down to simplifying, but I wanted to show you how to completely simplify because the first 10 or 11 problems on this section, it gives you something like this, like a sign of this, tangent of this, cosine of this and it just has you match the answers so you have to figure out um, what this looks like and if you stop here you're not going to be able to know which which answer matches um, the correct one that you should be getting okay okay so this was <clears throat> um, taking a value that's given to you right we're given the angle and all we have to do is figure out what the bigger angle is that we have to half. I want to show you a couple examples of one where um, the angle is not given and we have to do a little bit deeper thinking on it. Okay. All right. So again, I went ahead and wrote out our three formulas. So here's our sine of a half angle identity, 
cosine of a half angle identity, and here's our tangent of a half angle, and I wrote out all three ways, okay? So here's our problem. Um, given this information, we're going to do one and two on this page and three on the back page, okay? So it says, given cosine s equals negative three over seven, with s between pi and three pi over two, we want to find sine of s over two, okay? All right, well, they're wanting us to find the sine of a half angle, but they're giving us information based on the full angle, right? So the first thing we need to do, if we're looking at sine of a half angle, is we're going to need to adjust this. I'm going to adjust for S over 2. So right now they're saying our original angle falls between pi and 3 pi over 2, right? Excuse me. So if I want to adjust this for S over 2, basically I need to half this middle value. But remember, if I take half of S on the inside, I also have to do half of my values on um, the outer regions as well, right? So I'm just going to take half in all three regions. So what that tells me is that S over 2 has to fall between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4. So let's think about where that is um, in terms of quadrant, right? Well, pi over 2 is right here, right? Now we need to think about where 3 pi is over 4 is. So 3 fourths of a pi. Well, this is all the way to pi, right? This is halfway to pi. So 3 fourths of the way to pi would be right here, right? 3 pi over 4, right? Because here's 1 fourth, here's 2 fourths, here's 3 fourths, and then 4 fourths would be all the way down there. So what we're saying is that um, our angle divided by 2 has to fall somewhere in here, okay? So what that means is that it's going to be in quadrant 2, okay? So quadrant 2 has a positive sine value, right? Over here, quadrant 2 sine is going to be positive, and uh, cosine is going to be negative, right? Because sine has to do with our y value. Over here, our y value is above the x-axis, so it's positive. Cosine has to do with our x value. So in quadrant 2, if we're to the left of the y-axis, um, that's going to give us a negative, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and plug in our formula, which is written right up here in the corner, right? So sine of x over 2. Now, they're saying x over 2. Here we have s over 2. So it's going to be the same other than wherever we see an x, we're going to be putting our s. So, And I'm not going to put plus or minus because we've already determined that sine is positive, right? So we're going to get a positive square root of 1 minus cosine s all over 2 right? Because remember, whatever's on top of that, um, whatever's on top of that fraction is what we're taking the cosine value of. So if I have an S on top of the fraction, then we're putting an S in for our cosine, okay? All right, so now that we have our formula, now hopefully we can go ahead and finish this out because they actually gave us the cosine value for S, right? So this means we get the square root of 1 minus, now cosine s is negative 3 sevenths, negative 3 sevenths all over 2. So again, for an exam, you could stop right here. Stop here. I'll just put exam. Exam, stop here, okay? But if you're working out a homework problem, we're going to go ahead and algebraically manipulate this down to something that looks a little bit better, okay? All right, so first thing I need to do is that double negatives are going to make this positive, and then I need to get a common denominator between 1 and 3 sevenths. So my common denominator is going to be 7, so I'm going to write this 1 as 7 over 7. So this gives me the square root of 7 over 7 
plus 3 over 7 all over 2. So now I can combine these uh, fractions. So I get 10 over 7 divided by 2. And I'm going to go ahead and write that 2 as a fraction. So 2 over 1. Okay. So that gives me the square root of, when we divide fractions, we flip and multiply by um, the denominator. So 10 over 7 times 1 half is going to give me the square root of, well here, 10 and 2 I can reduce by 2. 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 10 five times. So I end up with 5 sevenths. Okay. Now again, they see this as a radical in the denominator because this can be written as the square root of 5 over the square root of 7. So they want us to rationalize the denominator. And remember, whenever we rationalize the denominator, um, in this case, since we just have a radical in the denominator, we can just multiply on top and bottom by the square root of 7, right? Rationalize the denominator. Okay. So this leaves me with um, the square root of 35 over 7. And we can just leave it like that. Okay. Not too bad, hopefully. Okay. All right. So let's look at cosine. Cosine of s over 2. We've already adjusted. We know it's in quadrant 2. We know our cosine should be a negative value. So I'm going to go ahead and say this equals a negative, and then I'm going to plug in my cosine formula. Again, it's already written as a half angle, but we just used an S on top. So remember, whatever's on top, that's what we're evaluating our trig function at. So we're going to get a negative square root of 1 plus cosine S all over 2. And then I just need to simplify. So I get negative square root of 1 plus, now cosine s was given to us, right? Cosine x is negative 3 sevenths, negative 3 sevenths all over 2. Again, for an exam, this is as far as you need to go. Exam, stop here, okay? But for your homework, if you need to get an exact answer that's simplified down to the fullest, we're going to have to go a little bit further. Okay. So again, I'm going to have to get a uh, common denominator for the top. So this one I can write as 7 over 7. I have 7 over 7 minus 3 over 7, which is going to give me a 4 over 7 on top. Right? And then, again, I can write this 2 in the denominator as a fraction. I can write that as 2 over 1. So I'm going to go ahead and flip. So I have a negative square root of my top fraction, which is 4 sevenths, times, when I flip and multiply by the denominator, 1 half, which here I can reduce my 4 and my 2. Right, 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 4 two times, so I end up with 2 sevenths. And then again, just like our last one, we can't leave it as the square root of a fraction because they assume that means we have a square root on the, on the denominator. So this is like negative square root of 2 over square root of 7, and then we want to go ahead and rationalize that denominator by multiplying on top and bottom by the square root of 7. Rationalize the denominator. Okay. So that's going to give us a negative square root of 14 all over 7. And that should give you the answer that you need in my math lab to either enter or match with one of the given um, answer solutions, possibilities, right? Okay, so using the same information here, we want to do number three on the back, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Now remember, we were talking about quadrant 2, right? Because this was 3 pi over 4. This was pi over 2. And we knew it fell somewhere in here for quadrant 2. So for this one, they want us to find tangent. So if we know that in quadrant 2, <clears throat> excuse me, if we know that in quadrant 2 um, that 
our sine value is uh, positive, right? And our cosine value is negative, then that means our tangent value, which is a ratio of sine to cosine, should also be negative, right? Now, when I look at my, my options here for using tangent, I would love to be able to use one of these two, right? But right now I can't because the only information that was given to me about this one, if I flip back over real quick, the only information that was given to me was the cosine value. They told us that cosine s is equal to negative 3 sevenths, but they didn't tell us anything about sine, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go over here. And they told us that cosine of s is equal to negative 3 sevenths. So if the only thing that I know is cosine, then I have to use this first uh, formula, right? Because in order to use these formulas, I would also have to know the sine value, which I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and take this formula, knowing that tangent has to be negative, and say that tangent of s over 2 is going to turn out negative. And I'm going to take the square root of 1 minus cosine s divided by 1 plus cosine s. And then I can go ahead and plug in what cosine s equals. So that's going to be negative square root of 1 minus negative 3 sevenths. And on bottom, 1 plus negative 3 sevenths. Okay. Again, on an exam, you can stop here. Exam, stop here. Okay, because I'm not going to mark off points if you made little errors trying to get this manipulated down to something pretty. But if they give you a question like this in your homework, we are going to have to manipulate it down into something pretty. Okay, so for an exam, you can stop there, but we're going to go ahead and work it on out. So we have a negative. In the top, I need a common denominator between 1 and 7, which would be 7. So I'm going to write this 1 as 7 over 7. My double negatives are going to become positive. And then in the denominator, same thing. My common denominator between 1 and 7 is going to be 7. So I'm going to write this 1 as 7 over 7 minus 3 sevenths. So I get negative square root of 7 sevenths plus 3 sevenths is 10 sevenths. And on bottom, 7 sevenths minus 3 sevenths is 4 sevenths. Right? So I end up with negative square root of, now that I have a division, I can go ahead and flip and multiply by the one on bottom. So I have 10 sevenths times 7 fourths. And then my sevenths are going to cancel, and my 4 and 10 I can reduce by 2. So I end up with negative square root of 5 halves. And then I do want to go ahead and write this as negative square root of 5 over square root of 2 so that I can rationalize the denominator and get rid of the radical um, in the denominator. right? So I end up with negative square root of 10 all over 2. And I just leave it like that. So just a quick note, if we really didn't want to use this formula, we could have used one of these other formulas, but we would have had to have known what sine x was, right? Or in this case, sine s. So if we wanted to figure out what the s or the sine value of s is, we could have actually done that using um, a reference triangle. So I'm going to do this down below. You don't have to do this, but um, I just want to show you this an, another option for your homework. Okay, so basically we're asking... How would you find sine s? Okay, so remember the only information that they gave us um, about s. Okay, this was this is what we modified to get s over two. So that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the original information they gave was that cosine s is equal to uh, negative three sevenths, and they told us that our s angle was between pi and 3 pi over 2. So if I want to do a reference triangle so that I can find the sine value, well here's where pi is 
and here's where 3 pi over 2 is. So my triangle would be down here somewhere, right? And we know our cosine value of S, this is my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So my adjacent is negative 3, and my hypotenuse would have been 7. So I can use the Pythagorean uh, theorem to find this missing X value, right? So all I would have to do, or sorry, my missing Y value, is I would have to do my X squared, so negative 3 squared, plus my missing Y value squared equals my hypotenuse, which is 7 squared. So that means that 9 plus Y squared equals 49, right? If I subtract 9, I end up with y squared equals 40, and then I take the square root, so y equals plus or minus the square root of 40, and we know that it's going to be minus, right, because we can see y down here is going to be a negative y, so I'm just going to say this is going to be negative square root of 40. So in order to find the sine value, sine of s is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite, S would be negative square root of 40 over my hypotenuse, which is 7. Okay. So going back to this problem, if I hadn't have wanted to use this god-awful formula, <laughs> right, I could, um, in a sense, right, just solve for the sine value, and then I would be able to use this formula. I could have plugged in negative square root of 40 over 7 for the top, and then plugged in negative 3 over 7 plus 1 for the bottom. Okay, so I just wanted to, to throw that out there in case, um, you know, you're given information like a cosine and the quadrant that it's in, you should be able to find any of the remaining five trig, uh, trig function values, right, just by doing a reference triangle. Okay, so 5.6, um, I do not have a worksheet for it, I believe. Um, but you should now be able to complete that homework assignment. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video.